G'day, it's Rob here again. Well, today we're going to look at something a bit different from Banggood. They sent me some packages, and yeah, I'll show you what they are. Package number one. Package number two. Package number three. Package number four. And package number five, or I should say item number five, because, yep, I've unwrapped it. And it's obviously an electric motor. So, what are all these things good for? Well, when you put them all together, you can make something a bit interesting out of them. This becomes this, this goes onto this and looks like this which can then be powered by this depending on which end you have the drive pulley on and which way you orientate the 10 mil shaft so basically it's for project work it's to make a uh, a drilling machine, or a sawing machine, or a grinding machine, and it's all you need to actually make up some uh, some tooling. The actual overall cost is really very reasonable, and if you go to the web pages uh, that are in the links in the video description, you'll see that this whole setup here is probably roughly 20 to 30 bucks at the moment it's on special the motor's not very expensive either so the whole thing is quite a reasonable price and you can play around with it and design something to occupy yourself and uh, maybe be useful what am I going to do with it well, I've got a few things in mind, but one of them is this. In one of my recent videos, you would have seen where I machined up this to replace this. And that should give you a clue as to where this is going. So let's fit this and then revisit our latest arrival from Banggood. So that looks sort of useful, doesn't it? So let's get the, the new toy and see how it would be useful on this. Well, I'm thinking cross drill. Motor mounted back here somewhere. We've got a very rigid, very accurate cross drill. That's one thing I can do with it. Or we can go radial drill or mill. I mean, you can use it for both, drilling and milling, light, light, lightweight stuff. So yeah, it's a matter of how you orientate it. And the motor would sit in here and drive. Or we can grind. Use cut-off discs. Or as this whole thing will pivot, we could use any type of stone that will mount in the chuck do grinding with that so you could theoretically square up your chuck jaws if you had a a stone that uh, would reach right in all things are possible the fact that this little high torque motor should be easily mountable with mounting screws on the front 
or you can clamp it around. This is very similar, probably the same motor as I use for Banggood CNC uh, routers and engravers. So, yeah, it's a pretty, pretty strong motor. So what we have are the makings for whatever uh, takes your fancy. So I'm going to play around with this and just see how uh, it goes in future videos. But for this for this video, we're just looking at what you get for your money. So we'll we'll unwrap the uh, the goodies and just give you an overview on yeah, well, how many bangs you get for your buck. Okay, let's do it. There are four basic configurations for these combined packets. They are all identical except for two things. So I'll undo the packet and I'll show you what the differences are. Each packet comes with a pulley which is a Gilmatite tooth belt pulley, positive pulley. It has a grub screw, it has a key for the grub screw. Well, there's two grub screws actually. You also get a bearing housing that takes the two sealed lubricated ball races they supply. There's also a separator so that you can, a little clip that goes on your 10 mil shaft so that you can stand proud of the of the bearing centre if necessary. Now these basically fit in from each end. They press in until you get the, the lip against the face. You also get An adapter that goes on the shaft. This is the shaft that's supplied, 10 mil diameter. This adapter goes on one end. It has two grub screws, a keyway, and it takes the, the standard 110 mil disc sizes, friction discs, cutting discs, grinding discs that, is, that you would use on an angle grinder, a small angle grinder. You get two wrenches. Once a pin wrench, once a an open wrench. The locking disc is left-hand thread. It's not right-hand thread, as on a normal angle grinder. This is the opposite. It's left-hand thread. It's done that way so that you can mount this on one end of the shaft and you can mount a chuck on the other end of the shaft. And when you rotate it foot in the direction of the drilling, the tightening uh, plug or washer on the grind disc won't unscrew. It will tend to tighten itself being left hand thread for that purpose. So that's why they made it left hand thread. Now, all of this stuff is, is the same, is included in each package. The only difference in the packages, and the four available packages are the chuck size and the Jacobs taper size on the end of the 10 mil diameter shaft. Let's have a look at the different chuck sizes that they can supply this in. And of course each chuck will come with its own Jacobs taper size. So as they get smaller, so this will get smaller as well. The available chuck sizes are 13 mil maximum, 10 mil maximum, 6 mil maximum, and 4 mil maximum. These are all made by Sanu, Sanu chucks. They all seem to be reasonable quality. Uh, yeah, quite acceptable. Of course, you get a key with each of these as your basic. Jacob's key wrench type key and your Jacob's taper sizes are JT3, JT2, JT1 and little baby JT0. 
Another package you can get is a 16mm Gilmer drive pulley for the electric motor that is also optional. 16mm that matches your 32mm spindle pulley so it gives you effectively it gives you a motor ratio of 2 to 1 and of course you get the, the little belt as well. In addition you can purchase the extra JT1 spindle and a JT0 spindle and they'll respectively do the 6mm chuck and the 4mm chuck. Once again you've got a 10mm spindle size. Banggood also sent me this little electric motor which is a uh, match to the spindle assembly, what it appears to be. 5mm shaft takes the Gilmer drive pulley and this has a high torque output. It uh, is rated to run on 12 volt to 36 volt and it spins at 3500 to 9000 rpm. So with a 2 to 1, 2 to 1 ratio, reduction ratio, that means you're getting a spindle speed of anywhere from 1750 to 4500 rpm. Now I, I ran it off of an, a 19 volt printer pack, just an old printer pack and it ran quite happily off that because this draws very, very low amps, under, well under a half an amp and uh, printer packs generally put out about an amp, you know. Anyway, I had a 19 volt one and I, I ran it off that and I got a speed of 5,815 RPM. So if you have that, that means I'm getting 2,900 RPM at a spindle speed, which is perfect for drilling and, uh, you know, radial drilling, cross drilling, whatever. It's a bit low for, for grinding. So if you want to do grinding, you want to spin the motor at a higher speed, which means you've got to have a, a higher voltage DC power supply. And I actually did run this off of my commercial DC uh, power supply. And I actually took it up to 50 volts. No problem. No smoke. Uh, no magic smoke. So yeah, it would run quite happily at 40 volts anyway. I wouldn't want to run it at 50 for too long, but it handled it. Nothing got hot, and uh, this seems to be quite a rugged little motor. Ball bearings. Uh, it's got the uh, tabs on the back. And on the front, it takes 4 mil screws into the front, or you can clamp it as you would uh, on, a, on a, say, a... a a router or an or engraver, CNC type setup. So that's the motor. Once again, not expensive. Well, there you have it, guys. I've uh, given it the once over. And yeah, I'm going to do some playing around with this and uh, probably set that for cross drilling, I think. But I mean, yeah, all things are possible. You could even use it vertically as a pillar drill or even as a mill, just imagine, I mean this takes standard diameter bear, bearings, there's nothing to stop you putting in another non-lipped bearing on the spindle or even two, beef this up and turn it into a miniature milling machine. <laughs> How cool would that be? Yeah, I mean obviously it's going to take time to do something like that, but you could play around and who knows, the sky's the limit. So there you have it guys. Yeah, it's uh, it's an interesting little setup, and uh, well, the links are in the the video description. There's a lot of different prices for the different components, but they're all very very cheap, really, and it's not special at the moment. So, yeah, get in there and have a look and see what you think. Maybe it's uh, just what you're looking for to make up some gadget. I don't know. Anyway, hope you enjoyed it. See you next time. Cheers.